happy Monday Floss Tube. Hello crafty friends. How's everybody doing today? My name is Caroline. Welcome back to my channel. Um, it is Monday, August 20, oh boy, I say 26th, 2024 and I am recording here at home. I am the owner of Evertote and um, I have another YouTube channel called Evertote Notes from the Workshop where I share um, crafty happenings going on at work as well as floss tube videos with um, my friend and work buddy Carrie of Roxy Floss Co. So this channel is more um, where I get to share all of my more personal crafting and a little bit of um, you know personal updates. This channel has been going for quite a lot longer and just kind of like how I, if some of you watch, um, I know many of you watch Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. She recently has sort of changed her her channel around to be more indicative of the things that she's sharing, more of a making video versus uh, strictly floss tube. And and that's kind of you know I'm a crafter. Uh, cross stitch is my first passion, but I also love to knit. I am planning on learning how to crochet in the month of September. I love to sew. Um, I like to quilt. Um, I'm not a very good quilter, but um, you know, I dabble. <laughs> I dabble. I'm a bag maker. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm an all around crafty, crafty girl. And so that's really what this video is. It's kind of a catch up on what I've been doing, what I've been working on the last few weeks. Personally, I have two cross stitch finishes, two, uh, two cross stitch FOs and one sock finish. So I will share those with you. I also have a whole pile of stuff here. Um, so much so much wonderful color. Are we lucky? I mean, our supplies are just, I, I, I've said it before, but I really do feel like, you know, the description of, of a magpie and, you know, when you've got all of these little, it's really hard not to touch. You can understand why when you go into places like, um, you know, like a, like a local needle workshop that's full of, for example, I, I recently um, was fortunate enough to visit the attic needlework um, shop in Mesa, Arizona. And um, I mean, the place is just full of wonderful models, shop models, smalls and framed pictures on the wall. And they've got tables covered with bits and bobs and so many wonderful things. And everywhere you, you look, there are little signs that say, please do not touch the models. <laughs> and it's, it's really, it's, it's your nature to want to pick it up and touch it, look at it and feel it. And you can understand why they, they put the signs up because with so many people um, traveling through, uh, those shop models would pra probably just disintegrate from all of the love that they would receive. So um, let's show you and share what I've been up to crafting wise because I've been a busy little bee. First of all, I am participating in, now I have some yarn here that's in crinkly bits. So let me just move that first and then I'll be done with that noise because I don't want to take it out of the packaging quite yet. Um, let's see, I'll put it over here. Okay. Um, I am participating in a, a smalls exchange a rather wonderful smalls exchange that is um, being hosted by Karen um, of the, she is the stitching owl on YouTube and um, she is local to me here in London Ontario she lives here so she's a local local stitchy friend and um, Karen is being joined by Cheryl and Michelle of the two bay stitchers um, of floss tube um, and friends from Prince Edward Island and together they are hosting Canada swaps and I was invited to participate by Karen a few months back and so I I'm I'm almost ready to go so I have my small stitched I just need to FFO it so here's what I chose the sort of um, guidelines were there was a size given and I think it needed to be 
the stitching needed to be less than six inches square, I think. I, I'm going off my memory here. Um, and it needed to be the work of a Canadian designer. So we are all shipping out our smalls this coming weekend, which is Labor Day weekend here in Canada, um, in Ontario. And I know that uh, many other, I think the States also, I think you, you do Labor Day. You just spell it differently than we do. Um, so we are all to have our smalls in the mail, in the post by this weekend. So the, the feeling is that all of these, these wonderful exchanges are winging their way across the country at the same time. And I do have, um, I have confirmed with Karen that this, this swap is going to happen twice a year. So if you missed out on it this time, um, you're going to want to subscribe to both uh, the Stitching Owl and the Two Bay Stitchers so that um, you, can be, uh, you can be let in on when the next swap will happen. So the Canadian designer that I chose was my friend Ellen. Um, her 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 name her business name her cross stitch company designing name is Maximum Cross Stitch. I talk about her all the time. If you've been here for a while, you know my friend Ellen, who's actually coming to visit me on Wednesday. She's coming for a sleepover. We're gonna we're gonna get up to crafty crafty goodness. Um, that reminds me, uh, Evertote is hosting a movie night here in London at the Highland Theatre on Wednesday night, if you're interested. And it is a crafty cinema night. So we have the whole theatre and it's a very small group of people. So it's going to be a very intimate, fun night. Uh, the movie is Notting Hill. The movie starts at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and the lights will be dim. So they're not gonna be fully out, but they need to have the lights at a certain level so that we can still see the movie. Um, so I will be bringing, I've, and I've got a few extra pairs to bring with me as well, uh, a neck light to help me see. And my, my goal is to, um, I will probably bring some, um, either some larger count fabric to, to work on, a project on a, in a Q-snap, or I'll bring some knitting. I haven't decided yet, but Ellen is, uh, Ellen's going to be there as well. So that's going to be fun. So let's show you her pattern. I stitched, I used this booklet chart, it's called Four Fancy Tiles, and um, Ellen, these are original designs from Ellen, she charted them using Roxy Flosco Floss, and I believe porcelain linen, oh no, sorry, the models were stitched on um, Cedar River linen. Our friend Jody, wonderful Cedar River linen, um, and she used the color Spindrift. So that was that was the fabric that she used in the models. And then Roxy Floss goes to called for a floss, but there is a DMC conversion included. So the floss list is long, but it includes all of the flosses for all four charts. So I chose the bird. And I finished. Now I have to I have to cover up. So what I did was I stitched the initials of the recipient on the small. And I'm not gonna tell you what, yet how I'm going to FFO it because I want that to be a surprise, just in case she's watching. So I'm going to FFO it probably on Thursday morning. Nothing like leaving it to the last minute. And then um and then I will take a little bit of, I'll take a few photos of the finish and share it with you again uh, another time. We are also supposed to take photos of our finish and send it to Karen or um, Cheryl and Michelle so that they can put together a video montage of all of the swaps that were exchanged. So I'm gonna cover up the initials and show you my stitching. So I can't quite show it to you in all of its glory, but I think you'll get the idea. Isn't it so sweet? I wish I could remove my finger and show you the whole thing because there were a lot of color changes in this. Ellen really, um, she used color to really make the bird come alive. And so I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit fiddly, but 
it, it seemed to just come to life in front of my eyes. I did the border first and then, and then I got to stitch the bird and I'm really glad that I did it that way because the bird was really fun to stitch at a point in time where sometimes I can feel like it's an obligation that I have to finish it, but the stitching that I had to do was really fun. So it made it really pleasurable actually. And uh, it just seemed to stitch itself. So it, the stitching is completely finished and I just need to turn it into an FFO and then get it into the mail. So that's the job for later this week. Um, it was also suggested that if we wanted to include some extra bits and pieces in the package, then um, there is a dollar value limit. I think it's $10 Canadian if you want to include a little extra treat along with your, with your small. So I have a couple of, a couple of things in mind, uh, but I I'll still need to put that together. So yeah, I finished the stitching. So I'm pretty pleased with myself. Um, the next, the next thing I, so I'm totally going out of order here because I actually finished that as well as one other cross stitch piece yesterday. Two, I had two finishes in one day. And I think for me, that might actually be the first time that that's ever happened. I'm not sure that I can remember a time. Maybe I have, and I'm just not remembering, but to have them both finished in the same day for me, that was, <laughs> I went to bed feeling pretty pleased with myself. So. I'll show you, I, I did actually did, I did a funny little short. You can do shorts on YouTube, um, on your, on your channel. And so I filmed like a one minute, look at what I did <laughs> video when I first finished this just for fun. And actually just to kind of test what I could do with the, cause I've never made a short before. And so I wanted to do it. And I was so excited that I'd actually finished the sock that I, I, just did it and it was super easy and I don't know why I haven't done it before. Sometimes I guess we're, we're afraid of the, the unknown, right? If you've never done something that feels a little bit using technology that you're not familiar with, uh, it can feel a little uncomfortable, but I did it and it was easy. It was easy, easy, easy. So maybe I'll try it again, doing some more in the future. It was fun, but I was so proud of myself. I finished it. So this yarn, do I have the rest of the, you know what? I think I left the rest of this yarn or maybe it's, oh, it's, I think it's in here. This bag was gifted to me by my friend Lisa who lives in Germany. And um, we were, we, we are lucky enough to see each other sometime this year. It'll be twice a year. Um, Lisa traveled to Canada for Stitch North in the spring. And then I traveled to um, England for the big stitch and Lisa was there and she's just she's a wonderful maker and she's such a good friend and she made this bag for me because she knew I was going to learn how to how to crochet this year and so this was a very special gift that she made for me um, uh, for my birthday and I don't know if I've told you this before because I know I showed this I think I must have told you this already but I'm going to tell you again because I think it's such a fun story the, this bag has a leather bottom on it. And Lisa told me that this leather was actually salvaged from a couch that her parents were getting rid of because the, 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 it, was, it was the leather on the couch part of it was destroyed. But all of the beautiful leather on the back of the couch was still in pristine condition. So Lisa got out her scissors and she salvaged the back of the couch and she's been using them in project bags and I just, I just love that so much. I just love that so much that she has she has given new life to such beautiful um, and you know it's leather is special, right? Uh, it's it's it should be used um, and not just thrown away. So yeah, I love that. I love that. So I think all of my yarn, yeah, all of my yarny projects that I'm planning, two pairs of socks for sampler striped timber. Um, my leftover ball from this sock, for my second sock, and my crochet yarn is all together in here. So as I start my projects, I will separate them out into um, separate project bags and I will put my larger crochet project that I'm planning after I learn what the heck I'm doing, that will live in this bag. 
So this yarn, this, this is the yarn. Now I found a project bag. I was recently cleaning out my, um, my workspace at work. All of my crafting stuff from home went there because I have a lot of stuff. That's why this channel is called From the Stash Pile, because I have a substantial, I've been crafting since I was a teenager and I just turned 50. It's a lot of years of collecting and I love my stash. I have a wonderful, I'm, I just, I'm still in love with everything that I ever, well, mostly everything. Let's say 98%. 2% of things, maybe my taste has changed a little bit, but 98% of a collection from, you know, 40 years of crafting, it's not insubstantial. So when I moved my business, my small business out of my house here, uh, can you see Roxy? She's there on the couch. She's right there. She's, she's sleeping. And I know it's probably um, not uh, in focus, but maybe I'll, if she wakes up and comes over later, I'll show you. Um, so I was cleaning out my space at work because I needed to uh, clear out an office for Hannah there. Um, she was moving office space and the office that I needed her to, to be in was full of my stuff. <laughs> and I'd been calling it the room of doom because um, everything had just kind of been shoved in there and needed to be organized and gone through. So anyways, I found a project bag and it had a, a sock in it that was well underway. It was this yarn. And this yarn was a Leo and Roxy Yarn Co. yarn that, um, so this was dyed back when Carrie was dyeing yarn. Carrie no longer dyes yarn. Um, I think I was, yeah, I was part of the, um, the month, their monthly sock club. And this was one of the, the skeins of yarn that came in my subscription. And I started the sock and I had, um, I had the entire sock done except for the toe. And so I thought, you know what? Uh, let's test out your elbow. I've been dealing with some tendonitis and sock knitting. Knitting in general was kind of off the table. Uh, so I gave it a good test and I am very happy to say that knitting is back on the menu, which really makes me so happy because I love, I lo I'm a very basic knitter, but I really love knitting. Um, I love to do what I know how to do um, a lot. So I'm, but I'm slow and I get distracted easily. So that's why I have these unfinished projects, but that's okay. I'm very much a process crafter and it still makes me equally as happy to have a project in process as it does to have the finish. So as long as that is the case for me, then I shall, I shall carry on. So are you ready? There is the proper sharing, showing and share of my finished sock. It is um, uh, my favorite plain sock pattern was done by my friend Louise Patterson, um, who is Wildflower Wool, and she has some wonderful uh, knitting reels on her Instagram channel. If you want to check her out, um, at Wildflower Wool, and her super simple sock pattern um, was the pattern that I used to go along with some knitting tutorials that are actually here on this channel. You can find them um, under a playlist. And if you scroll down, because uh, if you already know how to knit, but you've always wanted to try socks, uh, you know, those videos are, are getting, they're, they're showing their age. I probably would have done some things differently, like the music at the beginning is a little bit loud, a little bit annoying. But again, we learn as we go. I would probably redo them but you know, they're there. And I think that there is still useful, valuable information to share, um, love of knitting socks. And Louise's pattern was the pattern that I used for that tutorial. Um, it's available on Ravelry. I think it's $5. Um, and it's just a very basic sock pattern. So it is a cuff down, uh, two by two rib sock, a uh, cuff, a uh, plain vanilla leg, a uh, heel flap and gusset, which is my favorite, favorite, favorite heel construction. 
I always make it a little bit longer than the pattern calls for because I have a really high arch on my foot and then I find that it, it fits me really well. Um, and then a plain, you know, those are, those are the gusset decreases as you decrease back down to get the same number of stitches as your leg. And then the a rounded toe. I actually used the toe recipe from a crazy sock lady pattern that was actually, um, I know, crinkle, crinkle, last year's, last year's sampler striped timber sock. I actually haven't worn these yet because it's been too hot for, for socks. I, I love being barefoot in the summer. So I don't start to wear socks until it starts to cool down in the fall. So I actually haven't even worn my new socks yet. So the, this was the sock yarn from last year's collaboration for sampler September. I'll, I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, but let me just tell you about the sock first. Um, I used the heel toe do -si do pattern from Kay, who is the crazy sock lady. Slightly different, I think it's a twisted rib cuff, heel flap and gusset, straight. Um, you can see the pattern continues down the, the leg and the foot. Maybe the other side will show you. There you can see, see that? there it, it creates this kind of chevron effect in the um, in the stripe which is really fun and that's the toe I used the recipe for the rounded toe that Kay has in that pattern to um, to do my toe on this sock so I got impatient because I thought it was it all it needed was the toe and I didn't check <laughs> and it doesn't fit me. <laughs> it's too small. It's just a little bit too small. I mean, I can get it on, but I would really wear through the toe fast because it's just a little bit too snug, which means it fits my daughter. And my daughter loves my hand knit socks. So I sent her the picture and I said, I hope you like these because um, they are now yours. They're too small for me. And she said, yay, I love them. They're, they're beautiful. So fortunately we have a very happy sock recipient. I just need to knit the second sock. So I have a half finished object. So I did finish that, um, maybe middle of last week, I think about that. And then yesterday I finished the two cross stitch designs. So the, the fancy bird I already showed you. The second thing that I finished last night and I was determined because I, I just, I really wanted this finish and it's just been such a fun project to work on. I, I really did love every single stitch. Uh, what the heck did I do with, oh, there it is. Okay. So this was, uh, from Pansy Patch Quilts and Stitchery. The Summer Garden at Cranberry Manor. It's Lori Pangeli, a Canadian designer. And Hannah, um, we brought these into the shop and Hannah did a floss conversion to Roxy Floss. And that's what I used. So here's my leftover floss. You can see the colors were really vibrant and summery. I know my lighting is garbage in here. It always it turns my hair really, really strawberry, which is not what I'm going for. So actually I need to get this, I need to get it fixed. It's way too strawberry. I, yeah, so I don't know. I hate my hair, whatever, whatever. We don't need to get into talking about my hair cause I could go on for days, but, um, the colors for this chart made me so happy. They just, Hannah just nailed it. They really are just so pretty together. So summery. Um, this, the cranberry color, a uh, Tuesday, this line of cranberries is just some of my favorite floss in the entire collection. And so I chose to stitch my piece, two strands of floss over two on a 28 count linen. Um, I used Roxy Flosco biscuit and it's a light dye lot version of biscuit the 28 count is 
is a little bit lighter and less modeling than some of our other yardage. Um, and we currently have a fair bit. So I felt safe um, stitching this on that, knowing that it would look good on any kind of cut of biscuit, no matter what the modeling did. So I feel like I did that also with um, Hibernation Day, Heartstring Samplery. I chose a cut of linen that was the lightest version of that linen because it has snowflakes on it. And I wanted to make sure that the snowflakes would work on that linen. If they would work on that cut, they would work on any cut of, it was uh, Panettone. And so that's, I did the same thing here. So it's a 28 count biscuit, which meant I could use two strands of floss. And it just felt like it was, the coverage was so plump and rich and the colors were rich and vibrant and summery and happy. And it just made me happy to stitch it. Uh, so this one, it feels like it stitched itself. So I still need to um, write it down in my book. I have been keeping track of my starts, my, my, the number of starts and finishes that I'm doing this year. I am trying to do 50 for 50. Um, my, my plan was to have that be a combined number in total, 50 starts and finishes 50. Um, the beginning of the year went a lot of faster where I really pumped out quite a few finishes in the first few months and I, I, I was silly and thought, oh, surely you could do 50 of each, which is ridiculous. I mean, come on. If that's one thing that many of us crafters have in common is, is feeling like we can accomplish much more than in the actual time that we have. <laughs> we are ever optimistic, which actually I don't think is a really terrible thing. I don't think it's a terrible thing to be an optimistic person about your joy. <laughs> it brings me so much joy. I'm going to be optimistic about it and I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to roll with it. So here you go. Here's my finish. I just, I love this so much. I can't believe how happy this piece makes me. I can't wait to frame it. Here it is. Isn't that great? I, I just, everything about this was so fun. Now the, the color of the linen is being completely washed out. It's a little, it's a little bit warmer in real life, but look at the colors of the floss. It's just happy. It's happiness. We've got, oh, there's my friend. There she is. Hi. Hi, Rox. Hi. Oh, I know. You're telling me all about it. Thank you. <laughs> she's very much, um, she's part hound. And so she, her mix is hound, Rottweiler, pointer, and puppy. <laughs> Pure puppy. She is three years old and very active. Um, she has yet to really spend a lot of time, in fact, any time at all at work because, well, she's just sometimes when she's ready to go, she's ready to go. And that can be difficult in a work environment. So we're testing the waters this week because John and Nicholas are away and it's just me. Oh, now she's going to have a big drink. There you go. So apologies. Let's just admire this again while Roxy slakes her thirst. Isn't that fantastic? I just love this so much. So, so much. I just love it. Are you done? Thank you. <laughs> oh, and a big wet lick. Thank you. Thank you for that. Gross. So, yeah, the bunnies in real life do show a little bit more they look a little um, faded on here, but that's okay. I don't mind that. I love tone on tone. But, oh, it was so much fun to stitch. And I do have a mistake, and I'm not gonna point it out because I know where it is, and I'm, I'm actually, it happened because it, it was late, I was determined to fish, finish it, and it was in one of the last few little motifs that I stitched. And after I did it, I thought, oh no, I put that in the wrong place. And then I thought, ah, it's okay. It's all right. 
I know it is there and it's just part of its charm. So summer garden at Cranberry Manor, done, 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 done like dinner. So I am going to take this to the framer maybe next week. I don't know. We'll see. I, I dropped off um, Cosford Rise uh, in the Dale, the bunnies and the duck pond. I finished that. I took that to the framer last week. So I suspect that'll be ready to go soon. So maybe when I go to pick that up, I'll drop this off at the same time. Um, if you're looking for a framer in London, I can highly recommend uh, Craig over at Chops, C-H-O-P-S. Um, you can look at their website, chops.ca. You don't even have to be local. I mean, they do um, do things through the post as well. They, um, I'm gonna show you some of his framing in a minute because he actually framed one of our sampler September models. Um, and I've got that to share. So those are my finishes. So uh, whips, what am I working on over the next couple of days? Well, really um, a, a sock and my, uh, my birthday stitch along is probably gonna be it for the next three or four days because um, it's the end of August, which means that it's inventory time at work. We are going, we, we need at least a couple of days um, to count inventory. And we've got, I've got Ellen here Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, so it's a busy week and um, there's just, there's just not as much time until the week. I'm hopeful for this weekend that I will have some crafting time. And that's when I'm going to work on Weeds and Wildflowers. Artsy Housewife. This was our collaboration um, for my birthday stitch along. I know if you're on Instagram, you've probably seen many of these finished. So um, I, I kind of fell down on my, my part of hosting the stitch along here on YouTube. I, I really didn't do very, I think I did one video maybe two videos where I talked about my progress on it. And I've talked about my progress on the other channel in those videos. But um, when I host the uh, Sampler September stitch along as well as the Holiday Countdown stitch along, um, I tend to do daily videos and I do them here on this channel so that we can all feel like we're stitching together. And I didn't do that for, for this stitch along. And um, I think that's okay. I don't think we need daily videos all the time they it's nice to do them a couple times a year so that they're for me they're really fun to do they but I wouldn't if I did them all the time I know I did them I did them for um, during lockdown I, I did daily videos a lot during lockdown um, which was really good for my mental health it gave me something to focus on something to do um, even though I work from home it still gave me something else to focus on that wasn't just uh, myself um, and and still being involved in community and um, you know even though I'm talking to myself I do feel like I'm talking to you we're having a conversation over a cup of coffee so um, anyways I digress I did not do daily videos for this my plan for sampler September is more frequent videos I would love to do daily videos for September, but I'm, I know for a fact the first week of September, that's not gonna happen. Um, there, there are a few things at work happening that, that need to get done, and um, there's just not enough time in my personal time to, to do them. Uh, but the plan, of course, for Flossmas, for Holiday Countdown, is to do my traditional uh, daily videos then. But I will be doing um, at least two videos a week uh, during Sampler September to get those because I really um, you know there, there's a goal we want to finish the one piece in the month doing it together um, so we'll, we'll talk more about the pieces for Sampler September in a minute now the stitch along for weeds and wildflowers um, as with all of my stitch alongs I like to post giveaways for those who participated um, and so just like we did with the Salentine's box, um, now this is going to be open until September 
uh, what did I say? It was September 7th. It was, it was we did we added an extra month, right? No, because it was two months and we added an extra month to October. I'm pretty sure it's till October. Let's make it October. There's no stress or pressure here. So October 7th is, I'm going to be accepting um, email entries until uh, October 7th, this year, 2024. We'll have two categories. One, I finished the sal, and the second one is, I participated in the sal. So we're gonna have two different giveaways. I'm not gonna tell you about the prizes just yet because I'm still working on what they're gonna be. But there's usually some, some nice prizes. So, and there's also the prize of finishing your beautiful work and project. So please email me, caroline at evertote.ca, and in the subject line of your email is going to be either, I finished the sal, or I participated in the sal. And please include a photo of your, of your work. Um, if you have, and a couple of you have already emailed me um, your finish of this, I have already tucked those emails away into the folder where I keep the giveaway entries. So please don't feel like you need to email me again. Um, also, if you finish it, you are automatically entered in both. Um, so I, I will pull names for the participation cell from the entire group. And then those who finished have an extra chance to win something else, if that makes sense. So you don't need to send me two emails. Um, but if you finished it, you are included with both groups of participants. I'm pretty sure that's straightforward. Um, okay, so let's show you where I'm at because I am hoping to, this is the next piece I really wanna focus on. I have the big flower top is done and that's about it. So that's what I have stitched. It's absolutely beautiful. I am in love with these colors. They are colors that I, are, I find them unexpected. And putting them together, oh, if you hear something, she's chewing on a reindeer antler and they're kind of noisy. So that's that, sorry. Um, but if you have dogs, you know, if you know, you know. Um, yeah, so it needs the bottom part of the flower. I have to stitch that. So I gotta get on that. It needs a stem and some leaves. So my, my project is on 40 count buttercup linen. Uh, 40 count Roxy Flasco buttercup linen and the called for called for flosses. Aren't they great? Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful palette. So that is going to be going on my floor frame here at home. And any spare time that I have, I will be just like Cranberry Manor. I want to focus on this and really start to see some progress grow because I need, I want mine finished by October 7th as well. Now, nothing like adding in another stitch along while we're at it, right? Sampler September is right around the corner. September 1st is when we start our, our big sampler September project. So this is a collaboration that is really, it's really close to my heart. Um, I have a real soft spot for Sampler September because um, it is entirely um, a collaboration between four women, four Canadian women who um, just inspire me. And I put this together, this was an idea that I had a couple years back. I had some wonderful fabric and I shared it with my friend Ellen, Maximum Cross Stitch, and I said, what do you think about doing a, a piece, a design, a collaboration for Sampler September? So this would have been um, last year, last year was the first one. And she was all in, as she usually is. And then I said, what if we included this amazing yarn dyer that I know who's really well known for dyeing self-striping sock yarn. And what if we gave her your floss pack from your design and had her dye a sock set to go with 
the the cross stitch pattern. So it's knitting and cross stitch together celebrating um, Sampler September. And the socks are called Sampler Stripe Timber. So I already shared with you last year's sock. This is now a finished pair. <laughs> this is now a finished pair. There's my other one. And now that the weather is getting cooler, it's almost time to wear them. And now that I've shown them off one more time for this year's Sampler September, I think it's official now that I can, I can officially wear them. Um, so I bought, I chose some fabric um, for Evertote to make some bags. Oh, what the heck did I do with it? Here it is. I chose it from this fabric line. And if that doesn't say fall, I don't know what does. The rolling farm hill fields, the little tiny farmhouses in there, it's absolutely charming. So this was the inspiration fabric that I chose. And then Ellen designed the chart. Here's the chart. It is called September's Return. Last year's chart was called September's Revenge. So this is September's Return. And look at the little fields. They have little fruits and vegetables in them. And look at those houses in the alphabet and the crows. It's absolutely charming. It's charming, charming, charming. And, um, and then Heather, here's where the crinkly bits come in. Heather dyed a set of yarn to go with that floss palette. So I know everything is in crinkly packages, I'm sorry. But I, you know, I'm trying to keep things clean around here. So there's my, my floss pack. You'll just have to take my word for it that it's gloriously full. But Heather nailed the yarn. So we, not only just did she do, um, she does the sock sets with self-striping, but she also does a set of 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Ooh, there's 11 in here. 12, 12. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. I'm counting eleven. Eleven skeins. So there are the colors in their full set for September's return. Roxy. She gets bored easily, so if I take that away from her we could be waiting here a while for me to finish this video so I apologize for the noise but we're gonna carry on um, okay and now I have caked up all of my yarn so my this the self striping sock yarn that goes with September's Revenge I've caked it up it's ready to go it looks like fall in a ball and it has a coordinating um, it's not called a mini, it's called a midi because I think it's 30 grams. It's not 20 grams. Heather has done a 30 gram midi. Beautiful colors. I'm so excited about this set of socks. So this pair I'm going to be using Louise's um, super simple sock pattern. It's just going to be a straight simple sock with um, heels, toes, and cuff with the... Um, the coordinating cream color. It's like a creamy yellow. Um, it's called vanilla is this color. So it's not quite yellow, 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 but it's not, it's more yellowy than an ecru. Um, yeah, it's yellow, but it's beautiful. It's a buttery yellow. I love it. It really does just says fall. So then Ellen, as she does, was um, showing me some samplers that she had added to her personal collection. And one of them caught my eye. And I said, you know, that would be really fun if we kind of did a go big or go home for Sampler September this year. And we did your original design, your original sampler, as well as a reproduction. What do you think? Would you be in for that? And she was, because she is. And so, Agnes Kerr. Agnes Kerr came to life and she is a beauty. I love this sampler. She's, it's charming. It's just so charming. So look at the little, look at the little girl. The skin is one over one. 
Um, there's a little dog. Uh, where's the dog? There. Wearing a sweater. Look at that. Now, you know, there are a lot of specialty stitches in the model. Ellen has also charted a full cross stitch version, cross stitch only version. Both um, versions are available in the one chart. PDFs are available. If you're a PDF stitcher, you can purchase both of these charts um, on her website, which is maximumcrossstitch.com. Um, and you will get both the specialty stitch version and the cross stitch version together in the one. Evertote sells the paper copies. So this is Agnes Kerr. Um, now, this was framed by Craig at Chops. So you can see, I love, everything is so straight. Everything is straight. And he left the back open so that I could see what a good job they've done on the lacing. Lacing is new for them. And um, uh, apparently the women who work there love doing it. So I hate lacing. I don't want to do it. So I'm more than happy that they are doing it. So I love it. Agnes Kerr. So not only do we have two samplers, but we have two sets of yarn and um, sock sets. So here is the yarn set for Agnes Kerr. It's got some beautiful teals in it. It's a great, great collection. Okay, now I'm done with the crinkling, I promise. Crinkling is done. My socks I have ready to go, caked up. Where's the other one? Here it is. So there's Agnes Kerr, Agnes, the sock set is just called Agnes. And there's no midi, it's just the self-striping. And you should be able to make twins um, if, as long as you start in the, in the same place for both socks. They should be the same. The yarn comes in 250 gram uh, skeins. So you can knit one and then knit the other. Uh, what was I going to... Oh, I have um, Heather. Heather, is the, who is the dyer of Timber Yarn, sent me the samples. So this, was, this is the Sampler Stripe Timber sock. And here is Agnes, knit up. So if you're knitting the socks, this is what your sock stripes will. Um, now this orange, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not really, an, it's like an orange red. It's coming out super, super bright in, the, in this light. It's not quite that vibrant in real life. It's a beautiful palette. So those are, that's, Sampler September, right there. So that, that's, that's on my, my um, agenda for September 1, which is literally right around the corner. Um, a lot of sock knitting, a lot of stitching, a lot of crafting, leaning into fall, leaning into fall. Um, so before September 1st hits, I have a sock to finish. Um, if you've been here with me for a while, you'll know I started this a while ago for my daughter, for Sarah. Um, and I am almost to the toe and it's on, and then it's, on, and then it's done. Now, technically she could wear both of those socks together and have a mismatched pair, but I will finish the pair before I give them to her. This is a beautiful yarn. <clears throat> um, super old stash yarn for me. I have a really wonderful yarn collection, and when I was when I was um, organizing my space at work, I got to <clears throat> I got to go through it and touch it and admire it all over again. I really love um, I love hand dyed yarn, uh, so it's it's nice that I'm sort of tossing the stash a bit so that I can enjoy it again and make plans with it. So uh, this is an old old stash um, uh, from a dyer who was called Woolen Boone. The colorway was Thistle on the Boone Classic um, uh, base, four ply fingering. It's 100% super wash merino. And um, yeah, it's been in my stash for years. I don't think she's dying anymore. So I'm almost done. 
So that is going to be finished. I also pulled out, now this was something I was really hoping to have finished before this sampler September because I finished my stitching. Oh, uh, the one I'm gonna, I'm gonna be stitching uh, Ellen's original sampler. I'm gonna be stitching uh, September's return because um, Ellen said I could keep Agnes Kerr because she has the original and that's her model. She said I could keep that because I had it framed. Um, which I was happy to do. And um, her September's return, that's hers. And so I have to give that back. So that's how I chose which one I was gonna stitch because they're both beautiful, it was hard to pick. Um, oh, I didn't tell you what socks I was gonna knit. Just like I chose the Crazy Sock Lady um, pattern last year, which was the Heel Toe do -si do I went back. I've been watching some of her older um, knitting, uh, knitting, tubes and um right around the time that she designed she designed a pattern called mahogany run and i will try to remember to put a link to the pattern in in the drop down box below but in case i forget her patterns are very easy to find you can just do a google search um, crazy sock lady mahogany run and i'm sh quite certain it will come up for you i believe it's available um, it's easily available on ravelry and that is the pattern I am going to stitch. Now, her cover model is done with a very vibrant um, purple yarn. But because I was watching her videos, she was talking a lot about knitting that pattern with a self-striping sock yarn. And they are fantastic. The, the design itself really pops out. The self-striping sock yarn really complements her pattern and so I'm really excited um, to see that pattern come to life on these socks so I, I feel like that's something I'd like to do I'd like to challenge myself with a pattern sock at least one pattern sock a year and sampler September is the time to do it so mahogany run sock pattern by the crazy sock lady those are that's my plan for those and again Louise Patterson wildflower wool super simple sock pattern very basic vanilla sock pattern it's got instructions for um, grafting the toe, um, heel flap and gusset, all that kind of good stuff. So it's fairly straightforward. The, my set, my individual set of minis last year, I cast on and I was hoping to have something finished by this time, by, by the time this rolled around this year. But with tendonitis and getting busy, as we do, it just didn't get done. So. I have not very much knit on my cowl, but look at those colors, it's so fantastic. I'm just knitting a very simple cowl. I'm gonna knit it a long tube, and then I'm going to put the ends together inside out and Kitchener stitch the whole thing together so that it's double thick, and then um, it's to change the battery. My battery died. Roxy's still chewing on her antler over there. Um, well, I was saying, I was telling you about my cowl. Uh, I'm so, I'm so relieved that my elbow is feeling good now. I'm continuing to do the exercises that I did to get it to a place where it was starting to, I was starting to have some relief. I'm going to carry on. I'm using, um, I'm using a resistance bar called a Thera bar. I bought it off Amazon. I'm using the red one. If, you, if you're having trouble with your with your elbows, um, it really did help me. Um, it provided some relief over time. It didn't it didn't happen overnight, but consistently doing the exercises. There are exercises you can find on YouTube that go with this bar. They're called the Tyler Twist. Um, it's the Tyler Twist method or exercise, and it's a particular way that you use this bar, um, and it just seems to stretch out those muscles. Um, I still I still feel it. I feel like there's some, um, you know, maybe some also a little bit of arthritis or whatnot going on in there. Whatever. These are the days of our lives, right? Um, but all oh, these little minis are so, these colors are so amazing. So yeah, um, now that I'm back to knitting, I definitely want to keep adding stripes to, to this. Now, my plans for my other this year's sets of minis are going to be crochet. 
I'm going to crochet something with them. I have a few ideas, but I'm going to let them come to life throughout the month of September as I learn how to crochet. So I'm just starting the process of figuring out what I'm doing. Um, I've got my yarn and my crochet case. Um, I brought a bunch of these in for the shop. They're, um, I think they're clover hooks. They've got nice, um, nice grippy bits. And what I like about them is that they have the size, just like with the needle, knitting needles that I like, they have the size of the hook right on the hook. So there's a whole um, package and there's also darning needles and um, crochet. I think these stitch or locking stitch markers, I think they're more popular for crochet than they are for knitting, maybe. Um, anyways, I haven't even tested them out yet. I have some yarn ready to go, but I've actually, um, this has been in my stash. Again, this was souvenir yarn that I bought in Colorado. There was a yarn shop in Colorado that we went to, we went to, um, it was a family March break trip. We drove, um, I know this is going to seem strange, but these were the places that we wanted to see. We drove and stayed in Colorado for three or four days. And then we drove to Utah and we stayed, um, we stayed in, in out in Utah. Um, it was a, what an amazing trip. Um, we stayed there for the, for the rest of the time. And then we, we drove, we drove, we drove there. Um, it's not a short trip. <laughs> I'm not a great flyer. Um, and if we can drive somewhere, we like to turn it into a family adventure. So, um, it was a wonderful trip and I always try to find a little place where I can buy a local, um, yarn or local shop where you can get things like this. So anyways, I have no idea what the yarn is, but I know that it came from Colorado. I know it was local. Um, and I've been I know recording videos long enough especially I've been recording videos long enough with this channel, I should know better that usually when the battery dies, the memory card might also be full and maybe you should also check that as well. And I didn't and the memory card was full. So as you can tell, it's getting darker. It's getting darker outside and the light is getting more and more yellow in here. I'm losing more of the natural light and I'm really going, really going strawberry blonde now. Anyways, getting back to the yarn. I know it's from Colorado. It's special to me. Um, and I want to make something with it, but I have to figure out which hook, which means I am going to do, I'm going to do a little tester, little baby tester granny square with a few of the hooks to test it out after I learn the basics, learn to chain, learn to, learn to do that. So starting September 1st or 2nd is when I plan to really kind of you know, spend at least 10, 15 minutes a day, just having a little bit of fun, getting comfortable with, with crochet. My first plan for, for this yarn, after I've done a little tester is I'd like to make a pillow form just with larger granny squares. So two larger close granny squares. I don't want them to be super open. So I want my tension to be a little bit tighter. Um, and then I will probably line it with a uh, fabric and, um, and then it'll just be a, a cover for a pillow. And then, and then, um, and then I'll start a project crochet project with, with one of, I'll, I'll choose, maybe I'll go with, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know. The world's my oyster. I can pick and choose as I go. That's going to be fun. That's going to be part of the fun of Sampler September. And I'll take you along with me. I know I said two videos a week, but I, I have a funny feeling that I'm going to just have way too much to share and maybe it'll end up being more than that. Um, but I hope you'll join me for the, for the, for the fun. I love Sampler September. It's uh, yeah, it feels, it feels, it feels like a special project. So I think that's it for me. Of course, Roxy's finally quiet. Um, I think she's she's made her way to the other couch now um, I, but it is it's gotten late it's oh my god it's, it's almost eight o'clock at night and I have not had dinner yet so that's what happens when I'm I, I'm here by myself uh, John and Nicholas are at the cottage and Sarah is Sarah's working and um, you know I tend to 
eat a sandwich over the sink and call it good for dinner. <laughs> so, which is kind of nice. It's kind of, you know, it, it feels a little bit naughty, like a kid again, right? Not having a proper actual sit down meal. Oh, there you are. Yes, hello, hello. Hello, friend. Hello, friend. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, welcome to Floss Tube, Roxy. Thank you very much. As you can see, we're, um, I think she's trying to tell me that she needs to go outside. So, I better say goodbye. Happy stitching, everyone. Happy crafting. Happy knitting. I will see you again soon. Ugh, I don't know if I'm going to wet chin now. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Happy stitching.